Hello and welcome to our academy. We have already shown how a risk assessment is carried out in the basic video. Today we will discuss how to choose the right protective measures. We should now be familiar with ISO 12100 2010, which deals with general design principles for risk assessment and risk reduction, as it was presented in our last video. It provides not only helpful information on the criteria to be taken into account when carrying out a risk assessment, it also looks at ways to avoid and reduce risks. I would like to briefly remind you the three-step method and to look at the individual stages in detail. The first step is referred to as inherently safe design measures, followed by step two, the safeguarding and or complementary protective measures. If the measures taken at levels 1 and 2 are not sufficient, the third and last step is to implement user information. What do we mean by an inherently safe design? This term encompasses all the measures which can only be influenced during the design phase. First of all, hazards can be avoided or risks reduced by the physical form of the machine. This includes, for example, the visibility of the work areas. Only when an operator has a good view of the machine from his control station can he operate the machine safely. If this cannot be ensured, mirrors or camera systems should be used. Clear view for operator during normal operation is certainly a very important aspect, but also we must consider reasonably space to access safely for maintenance. Physical design also includes things like avoiding sharp edges or sharp corners. Apart from the machine, other physical aspects must be considered. For example, forces and velocities should be designed as low as possible in order to avoid hazards. But sources of noise, vibration and radiation should be largely eliminated or reduced. The same applies to hazardous emissions. There are several other factors such as ease of maintenance, consideration of ergonomic principles, influence of electrical, hydraulic and pneumatic aspects and of course the influence of machine controls and power supply of machines. So much for inherently safe design measures, which forms the first part of the three-step method. If not all hazards could be eliminated, further protective measures should be selected. In the next and second step, the safeguarding and complementary protective measures are selected. The ISO 1200 standard provides a flowchart from which a fundamental distinction is made as to whether hazards are caused by moving transmission or drive elements or by moving parts of the working process of a machine. In the first case, fixed safety devices or movable but interlocking safety devices should be used to keep the user away from the hazard. Interlocking means protective devices which are equipped with a switch which may or not be locked. The opening of the protective device must disable the machine control. However, if the danger is not caused by the drive elements, but by moving machine parts, a distinction must be made as to whether it is possible to make them completely inaccessible. If so, the same safety devices described above can help, or non-separating safety devices can be used. To be clear, this includes things such as light curtains, laser scanners or safety mats or similar. If it is not possible to make the access to moving parts completely inaccessible, it is important to choose carefully a range of safety devices to maximize protection. You see. The selection of safety equipment can be quite straightforward. Remember, however, that an increased technical effort is required, particularly in the case of non-separating protective devices. For example, performance level, depending on the risk, must be determined and confirmed. You should be ready to invest in safety through repeated inspections of the safety measures. 
You can find out more about this in our video about electrosensitive protective equipments. Thank you for watching. Goodbye for now.